Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we don't see many gaming tablets these days, and a company called SysSmart has one here called the G6 Pro that came in the other day. If you do a search for gaming tablets on Amazon, this one will be probably one of the first that pops up. And of course, it looks like a gaming tablet because it has all of the red pinstripes and some of the other accoutrements we typically associate with high-performance devices, but you can't always judge a book by its cover. We're going to be taking a closer look at what this thing can and can't do in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from the manufacturer of the device. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this thing is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This sells for $259 right now, so this is not a budget tablet. Uh, but it was selling for 300 bucks about a week ago, so it looks like they have reduced the price. So if you bought this one already at the $300 price tag, maybe file a ticket with Amazon and see if they'll give you a refund given that huge price drop that it's experienced. Now there are some things that I like about this quite a bit and a bunch of things that I don't. Uh, so maybe we'll start with the positives. The display here is great. This is a 7-inch display. It is a 1200 by 1920 display, which is essentially a 1080p display shrunken down into something rather small. So it is super sharp. It's got great viewing angles. In fact, the display is very close to the glass on it. It really looks nice. It's not all that heavy to carry around. It's 13.6 ounces or 386 grams. As you can see here, it fits in my hand here without a problem. So it just has a nice look and feel to it. If you're into some of those gaming uh, decorations here, you've certainly got them in spades, so that is all good. But it's not very powerful despite how cool it looks. It's got an MTK6797 Helio X27 processor. Uh, that is better, of course, than a $100 uh, Walmart tablet or something, but it's not so great for a gaming device. And you'll see some examples as to where it falls short on gaming in a few minutes. And that's unfortunate given that this is being sold as a gaming tablet. It's just not very powerful. It's kind of like a Yugo with some pinstripes on it, unfortunately. Uh, but one thing it does have is a good amount of RAM, 4 gigabytes. It also has 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage. The battery life isn't bad on it. You'll get about seven hours doing web browsing and some of the other basics, and about four hours if you are really pushing it with uh, some 3D games. Now this will work with cellular modems. However, I don't know what the US compatibility is. Uh, most of the time these tablet manufacturers list all the different bands that they support. There is nothing I could find on this one to get me that information. So if you happen to know, uh, leave a comment down below and I will pin it. I do not anticipate this working on Sprint or Verizon here in the United States, but I think it probably will work to some degree with AT&T and T-Mobile. Uh, so bear that in mind. Uh, the SIM card tray is up top here. You can also put a micro SD card in there as well. It'll support up to 128 gigabytes of expanded storage. You got a headphone microphone jack here, a USB Type-C port over here for charging. Note though that it doesn't support some of those USB-C fast chargers. I plugged in my MacBook charger and a few other phone chargers to it. Those didn't charge this at all, surprisingly. Uh, just a standard uh, tablet 5 volt 2 amp adapter was the one that worked with it. They do give you one in the box. Note that the USB-C port here does not support display output. Uh, so you will not be able to hook it up to a display or anything else. It pretty much functions like the micro USB ports we've seen on older tablets. And that's pretty much it for uh, ports on this one. So now let's talk about the Android version they chose for this. This is not running Android 9, it is running Android 8. And it's only the 32-bit version of Android 8, which means you can't install Fortnite on it, which is of course one of the big uh, Android games that are available for it. Uh, the last security update that it got was October of 2018. We did try to run an update before we started the evaluation process here. That was the most recent one it has. So I don't know if this is going to be updated all that often either. So it's behind the eight ball already on the Android version. It's 32-bit only, and the security updates are just not here. Now, one oddity of this device is that it lacks a front-facing camera. That's something we see on just about every tablet, no matter what the cost is these days, but this one lacks that. It does have a rear-facing camera complete with camera bump that is totally unnecessary because it is just a pretty lousy five megapixel camera that doesn't deliver very good images at all. So if you are planning to do some video conferencing with this device, you won't be doing it unless you just hold the rear camera up to make those calls.
And they have this really weird skin on the interface here that makes all of the icons look monochromatic and very similar to each other. Uh, so this folder here is all of the Google official apps, yet the icons all look different. YouTube here looks like this weird octagon along with everything else, and it's very hard to figure out where your favorite apps are because the standard apps all have these different icons. Uh, these are the official apps, but they just changed how the icons look. And then it gets even weirder because when you do have a bunch of things loaded on, you will have regular looking color icons next to these monochromatic things, and it's really kind of a confusing interface. Uh, a viewer noticed when I was doing my unboxing that they also stole the boot up image from Diablo, the game. Uh, so you can take a look at this side by side here to see exactly what that looks like. And I always get very uneasy when we've got companies that are ripping off publishers uh, and using those images in their actual products. So there's a lot here to be concerned about from the Android standpoint. So be aware of that before you jump in. Now, performance for doing basic tasks on this is not bad. Once you figure out where your favorite apps are with these weird icons, they spring up very quickly. Uh, this certainly feels like a slightly better experience than what you might get out of a sub $100 department store tablet. Uh, so all in, I was pleased with that. Uh, you can do all the picture in picture stuff here. And the fact that you've got four gigs of RAM gives you some pretty quick application switching. I will also take a look here at web browsing if I can find wherever they put the Chrome browser and take a look at that. There it is. And we'll go over to the nasa.gov homepage and check that out. Uh, so overall, I think web browsing, video watching, media watching, all of that will feel pretty nice on here. And it might actually feel a little bit more premium than you might see on a cheap tablet, which is good. But this tablet is not so cheap. And when it comes to actually doing things like playing games, it unfortunately is not really living up to what you might expect out of something that calls itself a gaming tablet. Let's take a look at a few games we tried to run on here. So let's kick things off with Goat Simulator. It's a 3D open world game. Seems to be running okay. We did see a few slowdowns here or there, and I think it's partly because the processor is having to drive this very high resolution display. But overall, it's playable and it's not a bad experience. Uh, note, though, that this game even runs on that $64 Walmart tablet we looked at a week ago. So it's not a terribly resource-hungry application, but it certainly does better on more powerful tablets. And I was expecting a little bit more out of something that calls itself a gaming tablet. Uh, we also ran something a little more casual, Pac-Man 256. That one ran just fine. Uh, but again, you can also run it just fine on something that costs less, too. Now, we were also able to get PUBG running on the tablet. That one's certainly a little bit more demanding than some of those other Android games we looked at. At the low settings, it was doing okay, but we were seeing some slowdown and lag points here and there. Not a spectacular experience, but it did work. Unfortunately, as we mentioned before, Fortnite did not run because this is running with a 32-bit version of Android. So let's move on now to emulation. I downloaded RetroArch and a bunch of cores to see how everything ran. Uh, we'll start with Nintendo 64. We tried a bunch of different cores to see how they performed. Unfortunately, they all performed about the same, not well. We were getting about 14 to 17 frames per second running Wave Race here with everything turned down on the emulator. Uh, so I don't think this is going to do very well with that uh, particular console. PlayStation 1, though, did run fine. We were getting pretty much 60 frames per second of performance out of it. Uh, so that was a good experience. But it was also a good experience on the $64 Walmart tablet last week, too. Uh, then I tried out some 16-bit emulation with the Super Nintendo emulator. Uh, that one seemed to run okay. There was a little bit of slowdown here or there with Turtles in Time, but I think that might have been something that was in the actual game as well. It really wasn't a bad experience. I think uh, the 8-bit stuff and the 16-bit stuff should be doable on here. But again, it's doable on a tablet that costs much less, and a gaming tablet should do better. Uh, GameCube emulation and other advanced emulation was a total no-go on here, so I think you will be limited again to the PlayStation and some of the 16 and 8-bit stuff. And on the 3D Mark Slingshot benchmark test, we got a score of 1,241. That does put it above some of the cheaper tablets we have looked at, including things like the Amazon Fire and the Nook and uh, the Walmart tablets, but it's not as high as it should be given that it's a gaming device. So they picked a really nice screen for this, but they did not pick a very good processor for something that is being marketed as a gaming device. And as a result of that, you've got a pretty cool looking tablet that looks like it can play some games at a decent clip, 
but it really doesn't. And it's unfortunate that they didn't put a faster processor in here to deliver the gaming performance that they are marketing. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.